Hi Long Range Hunting, today we're going to be talking about cleaning precision rifles and how often you should do it. Now, this is a topic that I get a lot of questions on. I actually just had one in the comments of my last video, and funny enough, he was asking, and that was the plan for this next video. Um, but it's something I get a lot of questions on. There's some misconceptions. Everybody has their own opinion on how to do it, what's right, what's not. And so I'm gonna break down everything and kind of give you guys the, real, the realistic perspective, not somebody's opinion on what you should do, but the actual factual basis, and then you can clean from there. Now to start off, let's just break this down. Now I'm going to do the how much between cleanings first, and then I'm going to do the cleaning section and talk about how to do it. So we're just gonna break this down. To start off, we have two types of fouling. We have copper fouling and we have carbon fouling. Now what is that and how does it factor in? Well, that bullet as it goes down with that copper jacket is going to leave little pieces as it's smashing in the grooves and it's going to leave some of those in the barrel. Now, even with a barrel like this, a custom barrel from one of the best gunsmiths out there, there are going to be imperfections. That's just part of the game, it just happens. And so those little pieces of copper will actually fill those little imperfections and smooth out the barrel. So you want that copper in there. It's kind of like a pothole in a road. If it's done right, not by the government or the city, you know, they suck at life, but if it's done right by somebody who knows what they're doing, then that road becomes seamless and it's nice and smooth. That imperfection has been fixed. And so that's what the copper fouling is doing. And then you have carbon fouling. And that's from, you know, the gases, the uh, powder, burn, all, etc. that's getting down that barrel too. And you do want some of that in there. You can do what's called a clean cold bore or a fouled cold bore. So you haven't shot your gun, it's at ambient temperature. Your first shot is your cold bore. And you can do either one and see. I've had guns that liked it completely clean, you know, no carbon, nothing. And then I've had ones that you have to have it fouled. Most of them are gonna to want to be fouled up a little bit. And so after you clean, what you're gonna do is take it out, run 10, 20 rounds through it, refoul it up, and then it's good to go. And it'll have gone from a little bit open groups to sinking back to where it needs to be because that carbon does help with that too. Now, the carbon is the part that you're gonna clean the most. The reason being is it's going to affect your accuracy at a sooner point. And so what you're gonna do, and it varies depending on the rifle. My factory rifle, precision rifles, we're looking about 250, 300 rounds in between cleanings. Uh, something like this, my custom guns, we're looking at three to 500 rounds in between cleanings. And that is where the barrel is actually getting so dirty that it's starting to affect the accuracy. And so it's not, you know, I just want to have it cleaned. It's one of those things that it's actually affecting your accuracy because the buildup. And so what you're going to do at that point is you're going to clean out that carbon. You go out 10, 20 rounds, refoul it up, and you're good to go. It'll go from being a little bit more open, shrinking in, back to where it was, and it'll settle back in. Now, the copper, on the other hand, you want to leave that in there until you are absolutely getting to the point where it's starting to affect the accuracy. There's too much buildup of copper. Now, it's really not a huge thing, because, I mean, you're looking, on average, 2,000 rounds before you even get to that point. And so you're cleaning the copper out, you know, every 2,000 rounds, it's not very often. I mean, I've had the same bottle of sweets that I used to get the copper removed. I've had it for 12 years and I still haven't gone through it all. 
and that's with multiple rifles. So it's not something you commonly have to do. Like I said, everybody's got an opinion. And there are guys that I know and, you know, I see that they'll clean it all the time. As soon as they get back from the range, it doesn't matter if they fired 10 rounds, 100 rounds, 50 rounds, any of that, they are going to clean it regardless. And they're going to strip everything, including the copper. And what they'll do is they'll go out for a match or before a hunt, run 20, you know, 10, 20 rounds through and get it refouled up and then go shoot. And I'm like, it's, it's really a waste. In my opinion, it really is because it's not needed. It's like the difference between a want and a need. They want to clean it. It doesn't need to be cleaned. And so it's kind of like an oil change. If you want to think about it like that with your car, let's say you need 3000 miles in between an oil change. So at 3000 miles, the oil's starting to get a little bad and you want to change that out and make sure that engine keeps going smooth and that everything's good. That's basically what I'm doing or I recommend people doing is just shooting until you get to that point and then cleaning it. Now, can you get the oil changed in your vehicle more often? Absolutely. Heck, you could literally drive it around the block, pull it back up and change the oil again. You could change it every 500 miles, every 50 miles. And every time you're replacing filters, you're replacing oil, it's spending a lot of money for an unnecessary amount of steps that it's unnecessary. I mean, that's just the only way to say it. And that's kind of the same thing with gun cleaning. They can do whatever they want. It's their gun, but it's really a want and not a need. And it really doesn't help you out in my opinion, because the gun wasn't the problem. It was completely good. I mean, there's just no other way to say it. So people can do whatever they want ultimately, but don't think you need to clean it like, you know, crazy because it just, it doesn't need to be done. Just plain and simple. Plus every time you clean it, you've got to go and, you know, shoot 10, 20 rounds and ammo is expensive these days. And so every time you do that, you're wasting it. By the time some of these guys shoot the actual 500 rounds that I need between this, you know, I could have a bunch of ammo and been, you know, shooting and almost time to clean it again. So it's, it's pretty ridiculous to me that they clean that way. But again, it's their choice. It's up to you what you do. I'm just here to give you information. And realistically, you don't need to do it that often. That's something you're going to have to figure out with your specific rifle. So, you know, shoot it. Don't clean it. Wait until you get to that point where you're starting to see accuracy issues with the carbon. You know, clean it out, refoul it, go to town. And then eventually a couple thousand rounds in, you're going to end up hitting, you know, that point where even clean out the carbon's not going to work. Clean that copper out, refoul everything, and you'll be back in the game. It's really that simple. Now, the one thing I do want to mention, though, and it is something that I personally do. It's one of those, I wouldn't call it unnecessary, but it's a choice. And that is every time I come back, I always clean the action in the bolt. I don't worry about the barrel. The reason I do that is to make sure that that bolt stays smooth because the barrel, the bullet's just going through. That fouling's not going to hurt it. Um, even being dirty on this, it's not going to hurt it, but it is going to not be as smooth, especially the dirtier it gets. And then I'm fighting the gun to get that closed and instead of open, bring back, move forward, down, super, super smooth. And so I want that bolt to work as fast and as smooth as possible every time, just from a functioning standpoint. So realistically, do you have to do that even? No. I just prefer that because I have that preference of wanting that bolt to be as absolutely smooth as possible. I don't want anything binding. I don't want anything to get in the way. I want that thing to close and be able to get on target quickly or even transition targets, get another round in and do what I need to do. All right, now we're going to dive into how you actually clean it. Now, this right here is one of my precision rifles. It does need to have the carbon and the copper uh, removed. It's getting to that point. And so I'm going to be doing that, show you guys a little bit. Several things you're going to need. And again, there's a lot of personal preference on stuff, but this is stuff that I actually recommend you need. And that is a nice one piece rod coated and make sure that it turns. 
The reason you want that is as it's traveling through that barrel, uh, if you get the multiply, the ones that are multiple pieces of screw together, it can bend. And so that metal edge is bending and grinding against the rifling. And so it can cause issues, gouging and stuff like that if you have a metal rod uh, that screws together. So you want a nice one piece, you want it to move you know, smoothly through. Uh, so that is what I consider a must. Um, I do not recommend using the little like hook together ones that are more portable, but it can end up damaging your rifle. Now you can use a variety of patches. Um, I use Q-tips a lot, especially for the action. I'm going to get in here on this action and I'll use it. I'll even bend the, uh, the Q-tip and it allows me to get into those tighter spaces um, and really helps. Now, the other thing you want, and this is a must, is a bore guide. Now, what this does is it goes in here where the uh, bolt is, and it's going to set up against your, um, your chamber, and it's going to guide that, um, that rod through without any issues. Now, anytime I do a cleaning, I'm going to remove the muzzle brake. That's just a given. I want to inspect it. I want to clean that. And I want to inspect the crown, the end of the barrel, make sure there's no damage there. It's uh, a safety thing also. So I'm going to do that, deep clean that. Um, you know, I'm going to run it through the barrel. Don't pull it back though. That's something I commonly see that I do not recommend is guys will pull it back through or they'll start on the end and they'll put their solvent there and then they pull it backwards through. And a lot of times that stuff, that um, solvent, is getting deposited right into the front of the action. And if you don't get it all out, it can end up causing some issues there. So that's something that I don't recommend. What I do is I'll actually set the rifle up and I'll actually tilt it down. So I take the rifle and I'm going to set it at an angle. Uh, you can see here I use a rear bag and what I want is everything going forward if anything does come out. And so I'm going to run the uh, rod, I'm going to put the oil on or the solvent on the end here, push it through the bore guide, it's going to go out the barrel. And then once it gets out the barrel, I'm actually going to unscrew that piece if I'm using a brush. And then from there, I'm going to pull it back out and then I'll reattach it and do it again. You can do it however you want, but that's just how I do it. And I'll run multiple passes that way. That way it minimizes anything getting into my action. I mean, I do deep clean that, but it's still just one of those things. It's not as, it's not worth doing, I should say. Now, as you can see, anytime that I do this, I'm removing this cheek weld. It's very simple, pull it off. When I'm done, I can drop it back in. I just, I want it out of the way of my rod. Um, so ultimately there's a million ways you can do this. Um, if you look at the muzzle brakes, I mean, you can put that in a sonic bath, a tumbler if you want. There's different things you can do. Sonic baths are what are most popular. You can get Q-tips or a brush and run them in there with some solvent. And you know, you can kind of pick and choose how you want to do it. Um, some people like to get a pistol size one with a bigger brush and they'll run that in and clean the chamber with it. I don't personally do that. I just get the Q-tip with some solvent on, move it around in there, and then I'll clean it out with those Q-tips, and it works just fine for me. I don't need to be jamming something inside there. Even saw one guy that used a drill, which, I mean, that's up to you. I personally am not going to do that. So, again, everything is subjective to you as the individual on what you want to do. But I highly recommend that you do get a bore guide. Um, get a rod that is going to turn, you know, spin, and it's one piece encoded so you don't damage the rifle in at all. Um, I do recommend tilting it down, you know, just little things like that, removing the brake. And while you're cleaning, also do a safety inspection. Make sure that everything looks fine, and that way you're good to go. Uh, that's just kind of my spiel on it. Uh, when I do go to lube it, I use this. It's a uh, Gibbs. I got it from Nighthawk Custom with one of my guns, and it's uh, it's pretty nice. So it not only acts as a lubricant, gets that action really smooth, but it also acts as a cleaner. And so it's also keeping that clean while keeping it lubricated. It's super easy to clean out. Uh, it, it really works great. I just put a little bit on a Q-tip, put it on my bolt lugs and stuff, a little on the inside of the chamber, and then I run it a few times, pull it out, wipe it off put a little bit more on and then put it back in and, you know, gravy there.
In conclusion, it's up to you guys what you do. These are just some pointers for me on things I do. When does it actually need to be done? The types of fouling that you're going to see. And just, you know, don't think you have to clean it constantly. It's not really a factor. You're going to end up wasting time and money. And right now with ammo prices to refoul it and everything, or, you know, even the economy, certain things can be tight. So why make it harder on yourself when it's not necessary? I mean, again, that's just my two cents. Uh, years of doing it, how I was trained to do it. Um, real quick too, a pro tip, if you're going to store a weapon like this for a long period of time, put it upside down. You're going to take it, you're going to run some rim oil or some other type of protective oil down the barrel, get, you know, a couple patches, get it coated, you know, put the action in there, get a little bit on there, and then put it in your safe upside down with a towel under it. What that'll do is it'll keep any moisture from getting up in there because um, it's going to be sitting on the towel. And then if it was sitting right way up, you could get a pool in the action of the oil and any moisture that you don't get could also get back down in there. And so it can be kind of counterproductive. But that's if you're going to be storing these long term. A uh, couple patches of oil will take care of that. No big deal. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video found it entertaining, found it helpful. I love seeing you guys in the comments. Uh, I love the dialogues. If you guys have any questions, drop them below. Um, you just want to chat, we can do that normal thing or any question you have on any subject that has to do with these, long range, etc. Just go ahead and ask. I'll do my best to help guide you guys in the right direction. So everybody be safe. Happy hunting. Hope you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and turn on notification bell so you won't miss out on any future video and happy hunting